evolution uh, is the key to unlocking and understanding a lot of topics that have been a mystery or resilient to understanding for thousands of years. We are the product of a combination of chance mutations and the process of natural selection working together over millions of years. Uh, and, and to fail to see the implications of that is, is a kind of uh, darkness, a kind of ignorance. Let me just give you one example uh, of, of a staggering implication. And this is the core of, of my next book. Uh, you look at the concept of universal human rights. It's the concept, the concept that is enshrined in the American Declaration of Independence. It's enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights ratified by the United Nations in 1948. What is this concept? Here's where a philosopher can do wonderful things. Uh, by scratching beneath the surface and bringing out uh, the key components of the concept. Well, one of them is universal. Uh, it means that all humans have these rights. Another one is that they're innate. We're born with them. These are not rights that were given to us by our parents or the government or York University. These are rights that all humans are born with. There are moral claims and entitlements that all humans are born with, innate. They're also equal. Uh, that's part of the concept. So this is lost on a lot of scholars, but it's there. The idea that every human being has these rights equally. You don't have the more, you don't have more of a right to life than I do. You don't have more of a right to freedom of religion than I do. We have them equally because we're equally human beings. And another one is that they're inalienable. I cannot give you my rights. You cannot give up your rights. I can't give you and say, oh, poor fellow, poor dog, here's my right to life. I can't do that. I can give you money, I can't give you my right to life. I can't give human rights. So they have those four key features. Now you might say, well, biology has nothing to do with this. This is a political, uh, legal, moral concept. Well, guess what? When people think of human rights, they're thinking of humans and biological terminology synchronically. Linguistics is the same thing. They're thinking of humans in a slice of time, right? They're thinking like that. Now, if you think of humans uh, from an evolutionary point of view, you have to think of them also diachronically. You have to think of them as having a history through time, or backward through time, right? Now, if we all have human rights equally right now, that means we, there's no difference between our human rights today and our human rights yesterday. The human rights that we had yesterday had to be precisely equal, not similar, but identical, precisely equal to the human rights that we have today. Okay, no problem. Now go back a week, go back a month, go back a year, go back a century, go back a thousand years, go back a hundred thousand years, go back a million years. Guess what? It's logically impossible to believe in human rights, the consensus concept, and to believe in evolution. You can't have both, right? Evolution is, is what, what Daniel Dennett called the universal acid. It corrodes so many of our cherished beliefs, one of which he didn't realize is human rights. 